Here's what's making news on this Friday. Another round of deadly storms hits the southeast. And the governor signs a bill that he says could help keep prescription drug costs down. This is News 3 Now at Noon. Good afternoon, I'm Mark Kane. Thanks for joining us. At least five people are dead after another round of severe storms ripped across Alabama and Georgia, leaving behind a trail of damage that stretches for miles. Omar Villafranca reports from some hard-hit communities in Calhoun County, Alabama. Wave after wave of severe storms pounded the south overnight, dropping tornadoes in the metro Atlanta area. Earlier in the day, storms battered Alabama. Carol Tomlin woke up just in time to take cover in her bathroom before a tornado slashed through her Birmingham neighborhood. I just got in the tub and put the pillows over my over my head and um, in the blanket and just prayed. But I could hear the tree, hear things hitting the house, and the house was shaking. She survived, but her neighborhood was badly damaged. Half of her neighbor's roof and wall tossed in her backyard. Tornadoes raked across the south, leaving behind extensive damage. Dozens of homes reduced to rubble and lives lost. The Calhoun County Coroner's Office said three of the five people killed here when the tornado struck were family members. Residents tried to quickly clean up the damage during a brief break in the storm. People in Tennessee, Georgia, and Alabama are picking up the mess and sorting through what's left of their homes. For some people in Bibb County, this was a first. I've never experienced a storm before in my life this bad, and I did hear it sounded like a train coming. Kayla Mayfield is just grateful her family survived. The four people that were with me are all I have living in this world. We bunkered down, we prayed to our heavens, missed us by six feet, and we're here with God's grace. Thousands of people in this area are still without power, so now as the sun is coming up, they're able to start cleaning up, but they will not get a break because there is more chance of rain possibly today in the forecast. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Calhoun County, Alabama. Our weather, of course, much more docile. Let's head to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Hattie McLean has a look at your first warm forecast. We had hoped for some sun today, but maybe later. I know. We're going to have to be a little patient, Mark. We may see a little bit today, but not a lot. Let's take a look at that severe weather outlook, though. There have been days and days with severe weather breaking out across the southern part of the United States. Still is a possibility today, but not as widespread of a severe outlook expected as what we've seen the last few days. Things are noticeably quiet here in the northern tier of the U.S., southern Wisconsin and Included. Just cloudy skies. Take a look at that view from our sky camera shot. Hardly any breaks in the cloud cover there on the uh, west side of Madison. As we look at weather track, you'll see that the clouds are still pretty thick across the area. Hoping for a little bit of clearing, but I don't think we're going to see a lot. Clouds from the next storm system are already moving into southwestern Wisconsin. Take a look at temperatures. We are at 37 here in Madison, 39 in Janesville, 41 in Platteville, and 43 in Prairie du Chien. We're still going to climb to the low 50s today, but it's definitely not going to feel that warm when you factor in the cloud cover and a little bit of a wind. Coming up in just a few minutes, we'll talk about where the sun is and when maybe our next best chance to see that sunshine is. I think the sun's behind the clouds is where it is. <laughs> it is. When they'll clear, that's what we'll talk about. All right, Hattie, we'll see you in a few minutes. Thank you. The suspect in the Madison men's shelter shooting who's been on the lam since Monday is now in custody. Ronald Stevens turned himself into the Milwaukee Police Department last night. He's charged with attempted homicide for a shooting at the Fleet Services building on First Street. During the, during the incident, the Madison officers fired their weapon. The Department of Criminal Investigation is still looking into that incident. At least 32 people were killed when two trains collided in southern Egypt. Three passenger cars flipped over. After the collision, more than 65 other people were injured, some trapped in the wreckage. Egypt's railway authority said the accident happened when someone activated the emergency brakes on one of the trains. It stopped abruptly and was struck from behind by another. The Associated Press is reporting Egypt's railway system has a history of badly maintained equipment and poor management. Governor Evers visited a community vaccine clinic in Wausau this morning, signing a bill dealing with prescription drug costs. The bill creates licensing and practice requirements for pharmacy benefit managers in the state. Evers says those managers play a critical role in the drug supply chain and help determine out-of-pocket costs for patients. This bill requires them to register 
requires get, has more accountability for the work that they do, and also, frankly, it 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 will it will save money and and put more power in the hands of the pharmacists in the state of Wisconsin. The governor is now headed to Shawano to hold a roundtable discussion about increased health care accessibility through broadband expansion. The Henry Vila Zoo says it's reopening its Lake Wingra entrance and the Children's Zoo after more than a year on Monday. The Children's Zoo is one of the last areas of the zoo to reopen to the public, which officials say was due to the COVID-19 protocols. The zoo says it is now making the carousel available to ride seven days a week with the rides costing $3. The Glacier Grill and the Chocolate Shop will also be open every day. However, the train and playground are still closed for the time being. Everyone aged five and up will still be required to wear a mask while at the zoo. A maritime traffic jam grew to more than 200 vessels outside the Suez Canal and others began changing course as dredgers worked fr frantically to free a giant container ship that's been stuck sideways in the waterway and disrupted global shipping. The vessel ran aground more than two days ago and could take more than a week to free up. Diggers have been clearing away sand so at high tide tugboats can try and pull it free. If that doesn't work, salvage crews may drain the fuel tanks it might make it lighter, but there's a risk then of capsizing the ship. The Suez Canal Authority said it welcomed international offers to help free the vessel, including one from the United States. Meanwhile, it means a serious slowdown in goods moving to Europe and the U.S. Dominion Voting Systems is suing Fox News for $1.6 billion dollars. The defamation suit argues that the cable news network falsely claimed the voting company rigged the 2020 election in an effort to boost faltering ratings. It's the first defamation suit filed by Dominion against a media outlet. UW-Madison police say they have cited three students in connection to the theft of a 25-foot-tall tree from the Arboretum last November. UWPD officials say they've received a community tip that led them to the Chi Phi, a fraternity that was banned by the university in 2015 for hazing and is no longer recognized as an official student organization. The three said they destroyed the rare Algonquin Pillar Swiss Mountain Pine Tree and got rid of it outside the city of Madison when they found out that the UWPD was in investigating. They were each fined $200. The tree valued at least $13,000. There's more to come on News 3 Now at noon. WeWork hatches a plan for a comeback and the classic home improvement project becomes a solo affair. I'm Naomi Ruckham at the CBS Broadcast Center. I'll have those stories and more in your CBS Money Watch report. Celebrate Ashley Home Store's anniversary sale with our biggest scratch and save event ever. Come in today for special buys and doorbusters up to 50% off. Plus, no interest financing for 60 months. Then stop in store for your scratch off card and win exclusive bonus offers. Ashley Home Store. Joan knows that harnessing renewable energy today, like we're doing, leads to a healthier planet tomorrow. Joe fights for fair wages for working families because he comes from one. Yo Parisi apoya programas que mantienen a adultos de edad avanzada libres de caídas y seguros en casa. Thank you, Joe, for all you do for all of us workers. Gracias, Joe, por considerar a personas de todas las edades. Thank you, Joe, for believing there's a better, cleaner way to power the county. More Americans are growing their own vegetables than ever before. At Garden Mats, we're here to help people supplement their food supply with fresh, organic vegetables. Whether you are a beginner, novice, or master gardener, Garden Mats make gardening a breeze. Spend your summers trying to keep up with each other, not your weeds. Go to GardenMats.com and plan your garden today. Wisconsin is a home of workers. We know what needs to get done, and we do it. Yet, we've been hit hard, some harder than others. Our contact may be limited, but we still can lift each other up. Your local Wisconsin energy and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home. You may not ask for it, but we want you to know we're here to help. Do you suffer from ED? Did you know there could be a way to relieve ED without harmful medications, needles, or surgery? Peak Performance for Men is here to help. Click or call now to treat your ED. And remember, our results make the difference. 
every child, no matter their zip code, should have access to a great public education. As a former teacher and superintendent, I know what it takes. I've led schools to high student achievement, I've expanded preschool, and I've balanced budgets. My opponent can't be trusted. She's backed by Scott Walker, and she tried to cover up a half million dollar financial scandal. Our kids deserve better. I'm Jill Underly. As state superintendent, I'll always do what's best for our kids. Celebrate Furniture and Appliance Mart's anniversary appliance blowout. Shop in-store or online and save up to 43% off in-stock special buys, like side-by-side -side fridges for $8.49 and special no-interest financing at Furniture and Appliance Mart inside Ashley Home Store off the Beltline. reined in spending last month as winter storms blanketed the nation. According to the Commerce Department, personal spending was down 1% last month after rebounding 3.4% in January. Incomes also fell more than 7% after a 10% surge at the start of the year. There's more trouble surrounding that stranded ship blocking the Suez Canal. It's now holding up an estimated $400 million in trade every hour. The figure comes from shipping data company Lloyd's List. The Suez Canal is one of the world's busiest trade routes, serving as a passageway for natural gas, oil and consumer goods. Shared workspace company WeWork is finally going public. The startup will merge with acquisition firm Boex in a $9 billion deal. WeWork has fallen from grace since it initially was valued at $47 billion in 2019. Investors were concerned over its business model and the founder's management style. And if you spruced up your home on your own last year, join the club. A new Harvard study found that Americans shelled out more on do-it-yourself projects in 2020 than ever before, totaling more than $400 billion. Stores like Lowe's and Home Depot have benefited from the DIY craze, but those gains may flatten as pandemic restrictions ease. And that's your CBS Money Watch report. For more, head to cbsmoneywatch.com. At the CBS Broadcast Center, I'm Naomi Ruckham. Naomi, thank you. Let's check Wall Street at the noon hour. The Dow Industrials up 268 points. The NASDAQ up 52. The S&P 500 up 34. Well, there's limited data on the COVID vaccine in pregnancy and breastfeeding women. Now, the largest study to date shows big potential benefits for moms and their babies. Daniel Backus has more. Krista Carey gave birth to her son Bennett just before the pandemic. Krista is a labor and delivery nurse in Boston, and she went back to work just as cases were rising. I think the biggest thing that we were concerned about was what I bring this home to my baby who I was breastfeeding, what I bring it home. Uh, back to my five and a half year old or my husband. So when the vaccine became available in January, she chose to get it for herself, but also because she was still breastfeeding. The, the possibility of protection and knowing that it was very unlikely to harm uh, made it worth it for us. Krista took part in a study at Massachusetts General Hospital involving 131 women who received the mRNA COVID vaccines from Pfizer or Moderna. Researchers found the vaccines were highly effective in producing antibodies against COVID in pregnant and lactating women. They also had higher antibody titers than a group of pregnant women who had natural COVID infection in pregnancy. Senior study author Dr. Andrea Edlo says they also found antibodies in the umbilical cord blood and in breast milk samples. Pregnant women can know that not only are they getting a good antibody response for themselves to protect themselves against COVID, but also they're potentially conferring benefit to their baby. And we know that antibodies in breast milk do help prevent protect babies from respiratory infections. Krista says the study is reassuring. I think that will encourage even more women to continue breastfeeding um, as long as you can. She takes comfort knowing she could be protecting her young son. Danya Backus, CBS News. And pregnant women are at higher risk for severe COVID. Experts say getting the vaccine is a personal decision and that expected moms should talk to their doctors. Well, a Vincent van Gogh painting of a Paris street was sold twice at an auction at Sotheby's. It was initially sold for more than $16 million, but that sale was invalidated after the auction house discovered there had been a glitch with the online bidding system. The second time around, the painting reached a high bid of $15.5 million. The painting has been held
held in a private collection for more than a century. Sun later today, maybe rain tomorrow. Hattie McLean has your weekend forecast when we come back. Tonight on CBS, it's a full night of action and drama, starting with MacGyver at 7. Then it's Magnum P.I. at 8, followed by Blue Bloods at 9. Then get a complete wrap-up of the day's news on News 3 Now at 10. Celebrate Ashley Home Store's anniversary sale mattress blowout on now. Shop online or in store and save up to $1,000 on doorbusters like these. Plus, beauty rest doorbusters are now up to 65% off. And Tempur-Pedic mattresses for as low as $30 a month. Ashley Home Store. Give your home a fresh look with the beauty and durability of wall and floor tile from Mohawk. Clean Protect porcelain tile is waterproof and scratch and stain resistant to stand up to life's messes. The microband technology offers 99% anti microbial product protection, fighting against stain and odor-causing bacteria for the life of the tile. Mohawk Clean Protect is 11% off exclusively at Menards. Save big money at Menards. From working out to catching up, and of course, game night. Your home is the foundation for all of life's awesome moments. This is Tom Coyle. My family and I say thank you. We're proud to be a part of this community for 76 years. During our anniversary event, standard carpet installation is just $76. Carpet one room or your whole house and we'll install it for only $76. Coyle Carpet One Floor and Home. Locally owned and operated since 1945. Creating family memories is what Maple Leaf Landscaping is all about. We design and build outdoor spaces that bring people together. Landscaped spaces for any size family. Functional, beautiful, a place everyone will enjoy. And it all starts with a free visit at your home by one of our landscape experts. So call Maple Leaf Landscaping today and have us create an outdoor living space for your home. Celebrate Ashley Home Store's anniversary sale with our biggest scratch and save event ever. Come in today for special buys and doorbusters up to 50% off. Plus, no interest financing for 60 months. Then stop in store for your scratch off card and win exclusive bonus offers. Ashley Home Store. Saturday morning, Taylor will have all the day's top headlines. And the first warm weather team will track the rain and let you know when the sun will dry things out. Join us Saturday morning at 5 and 8. News 3 Now investigates. Here are asked us, how many Wisconsin lawmakers have the vaccine? Getting the answers you deserve. Turns out, of those that got back to me, not many have one yet, and a few may not get one at all. Asking the important questions. News 3 Now investigates. The Farm Report is sponsored by Blaine's Farm and Fleet. And Pam Yankee from the Midwest Farm Report is out of the radio barn today, so here are your farm numbers. So now, Hattie McLean has a look at our weekend forecast. And Mark, yesterday we had talked about how we were going to have some sunshine today, but unfortunately that is just not materializing. Clouds are going to be holding tight through the afternoon. Now there may be a few holes in the cloud cover here and there, but they're not going to last very long. Rain is still in the forecast for the first part of the weekend. The second part dries out and then warmer temperatures as we head into next week. I have some 60s in the forecast, a little bit up and down next week, but still those warm temperatures are there. Take a look at weather track right now. High pressure is 
temperatures moving down from Canada, trying to scour out some of that low level moisture. But with this next system moving from the south and west, we're already noting some high level clouds spreading into southern Wisconsin. So any bit of drying that we do see is going to be overcome by those clouds moving up from the southwest through the afternoon. So best chances I think to see a few holes in the cloud cover would likely be north of Dane County where it's going to take those clouds a little bit longer to arrive. Here's a look at high resolution radar. At least things have dried out though from the overnight hours. No precipitation left across the region. We're just stuck with those clouds. Temperatures are not moving too fast today. Still in the 30s here in Madison and the Dells mid 30s. 40s though for southwestern Wisconsin. Winds are rather light, less than 10 miles an hour across the region, generally from the north northwest through the afternoon. Now here's a look at our future track forecast model. Again, it hints at the potential for a few holes in the cloud cover here and there, but going through the afternoon, mostly cloudy skies, temperatures slowly warming, but we should be back close to 50 later on this afternoon. Some areas north of Madison likely not getting into the 50s though. Our forecast for this evening calls for pretty quiet conditions. Winds begin to shift around to the south and as we head into Saturday, we'll see some rain spreading up from the south and west. Now by Saturday morning, we're already likely looking at some rain. Here's 8 o'clock. Pretty widespread rain moving across the state line, lifting northward as we go through the morning hours. Again, it's not going to be a steady all day rain, but scattered showers on and off even through the afternoon. Temperatures again topping in the low 50s tomorrow. Now as that rain begins to pull out and come to an end, temperatures cool Saturday night into Sunday morning, so there may be a brief period with a little bit of snow here and there. Little to no accumulation though is expected. By Sunday things will dry out. So we'll add up all those rain chances that we're looking at anywhere from a tenth to a half an inch across southern Wisconsin. Highest amounts are going to be south and east of Madison. Take a look at that upper air weather pattern next week. We are going to warm things up for the start of the week. Temperatures will be in the 60s, well above normal for this time of the year. Dropping back down, though, through midweek. Quite a bit of a cool down Wednesday into Thursday. But looking ahead to Easter weekend, we are going to warm things up once again. Temperatures will be back to around 60 as we head through the upcoming weekend. Here's a look at that extended forecast. Again, best chances for rain out of the next 10 days will be on Saturday. So if you want to do outdoor things this weekend, plan them on Sunday instead of Saturday. Next week, it'll be spring-like for Monday and Tuesday. Tuesday. Mark by Wednesday, you'll probably want that thicker jacket, but you can get rid of it again for the next weekend. It's that time of year, up and down. It certainly is. All right, Hetty, thank you. There's more to come on News for Now at Noon. Up next, we'll see what Howard's working on in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen. They peak in the fall, but are a welcome addition to our salads and soups. They're beets, and today we'll show you how to cook them. News 3 Now First Warm Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Thanks for calling 1-800-GOT-JUNK. Do you make junk disappear? Yes, ma'am. When? Now. <laughs> junk disappear. All you have to do is point. It takes attention to detail. With your local Bryant dealer, you're getting more than just a technician. You're getting someone who pays attention to your needs and the little things that make a big difference. It takes a dealer you can rely on. And to keep your family cool this summer, let me show you how this works. It takes Bryant. Bryant. Whatever it takes. In Madison, contact Heating and Cooling Incorporated to maximize your comfort and energy savings, whatever the season. McGann Furniture in Baraboo reminds you to be sure to ask about delivery options when shopping for new furniture. Because every store is different. Some stores have very specific restrictions, while others charge you an arm and a leg. At McGann's, we take pride in our skilled delivery team, and in most cases, delivery is free. And remember, at McGann's, we don't inflate prices only to mark them down for a sale. Stop in today and discover the difference. You'll be glad you did. McGann Furniture, downtown Baraboo. Joan knows that harnessing renewable energy today like we're doing leads to a healthier planet tomorrow. Joe fights for fair wages for working families because he comes from one. Yo París se apoya programas que mantienen a adultos de edad avanzada libres de caídas y seguros en casa. Thank you, Joe, for all you do for all of us workers. 
Gracias, Joe, por considerar a personas de todas las edades. Thank you, Joe, for believing there's a better, cleaner way to power the county. Wisconsin is a home of workers. We know what needs to get done, and we do it. Yet, we've been hit hard, some harder than others. Our contact may be limited, but we still can lift each other up. Your local Wisconsin energy and emergency rental assistance providers are working together to keep you safely in your home. You may not ask for it, but we want you to know we're here to help. It's that time of year again. How can we help? Could you haul this away for me? Oh, it's gone. There was stuff here. Amazing. When you want junk to disappear, all you have to do is point. Today I want to talk about a veggie that is often overlooked, but once it's discovered, or shall I say rediscovered, it becomes a new favorite. What is it? It's beets. Let me show you how to cook them. I start by cutting off the tops and trimming the bottoms and placing the bulbs in a pot of water. To that, I add some vinegar, a good amount of sugar, and a bit of salt. After it comes to a boil, I'll let it simmer for about a half an hour or so until the beets are tender. After removing them and letting them cool slightly, I peel them with a knife. And as you can see, it's a good idea to wear gloves so your fingers don't turn beet red. Now we can slice or dice them and serve them on our salads. Or we can cut them into strips and add them back into the sweet and tangy broth that we cooked them in. And after this cools, we end up with a chilled soup that's surprisingly refreshing. Maybe serve this with a boiled potato, some chopped cucumbers and onions, and a dollop of sour cream. One spoonful of this old world classic, and you'll know why this recipe has stood the test of time. To get the recipe for our homemade beet borscht, all you have to do is visit our website. I'm Howard in the Mr. Food Test Kitchen, where today we found an unbeatable way for you to say, ooh, it's so good. All right, Howard, it's time to introduce you to our pet of the week, a 10-year-old male cat named Sully. Our friends at the Dane County Humane Society say he's a sweet and friendly guy, loves attention. He's been known to curl up in your lap and purr while you pet him. Sully has some medical concerns, so if you adopt him, you'll want to work with your vet to put together a care plan. There's no adoption fee for Sully. A generous don donor has already covered that cost. So that's quite a deal. If you're interested in adopting Sully or checking out the other animals at the Dane County Humane Society, go to GiveShelter.org. Our pet from last week, Bennett, is still up for adoption. So let's get Bennett a home as well as Sully. If you're planning to do some spring cleaning soon, donate clothes, furniture, and other items you no longer use to the Dane County Humane Society's thrift store. That's on Watts Road on Madison's west side across from Woodman's. For a list of accepted items, visit GiveShelter.org slash thrift. Let's check in now with Hattie McLean. One final check of the forecast. And thanks, Mark. Maybe a good weekend to do some spring cleaning in the house, especially Saturday when we're looking at some rain. We're looking at clouds this uh, afternoon from our Queen Bee Radio Sky Camera in Platteville. A few holes here and there, but generally mostly cloudy skies. Here's your day planner for the afternoon. We'll climb slowly through the 40s, back to around 50. Again, mostly cloudy skies expected. Plan on some rain as you start your day on Saturday. Rain chances really ramp up Saturday morning through the afternoon hours. The rain comes to an end by Sunday morning. All right, Hetty, thank you. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you back here at 4 o'clock. In the meantime, have a great afternoon.